Bernie Sanders was on C-SPAN this week, and a variety of news outlets took his appearance, and then they ran with the headline, Bernie says he won't be the nominee. Now, I'm going to give you the full context of his segment here and his comments on this issue, uh, so you can see how misleading that headline really is. Let's watch. Will you speak at the convention? Well, uh, you know, it's hard to say that is... Uh doesn't appear that I'm going to be the, the nominee, so I'm not going to be determining uh, the scope of the convention. And, you know, as you know, I, a couple of weeks ago I had a, a meeting with Secretary Clinton. And uh, How did that go? It was very good. I mean, look, I have known Secretary Clinton for 25 years. We served in the Senate together. So, uh, it, it uh, you know, where we are right now is what we are trying to do, which is no secret to anybody, is uh, A, to create the most progressive platform uh, that we possibly can, reflecting the needs of working families and, and students and the environment and health care and so forth. Uh, and second of all, we're trying to do nothing less than transform the Democratic Party. And what that means is, uh, um, you know, when I ran in New York State and we lost pretty badly there, you had a closed primary. Uh, three million people in the state of New York were literally unable to vote for either Democratic or Republican candidates because you had to be a member of the party, and you had to make that determination like six months before the election. I mean, clearly just an obvious attempt on the part of the leadership, of political leadership in New York State, probably both Democrats and Republicans, to make sure that they retain control of their parties. That was nothing covert about that. That was very clear and apparent to everybody else. And we ran into that problem all over the country. So we want to open up the primary system. Uh, we want to transform the Democratic Party in the sense that and the superdelegate situation today uh, is very, very undemocratic. Uh, Secretary Clinton had the support of 400 superdelegates before she even announced, before anybody had announced, before eight months or nine months before the first ballot was cast uh, in Iowa. That was simply the establishment coming around a candidate. I don't think that that is terribly democratic, and I think we have got to change the role of superdelegates in a very profound way. My own view is that uh, probably the best bet would be to say that superdelegates, I mean, I think governors should be there, of course, and senators and congresspeople. Obviously, they should be at a convention. They should play a role. But they should reflect the votes of the people in their state. We have won states with 70, 80 percent of the vote where superdelegates are going to vote for my opponent. That does not sound terribly democratic uh, to me. But the bottom line is, and this is a very difficult decision for the establishment in the Democratic Party to have to deal with, do they open the door to millions of people who would like to participate in the political process, or do they say, sorry, this is our party, and in 10 different ways, you're not welcome. We really don't want you. We're doing just fine. Thank you very much. You can vote for us. We're going to put a lot of ads on television. We hope you come out to vote. But if you think you're going to be actively involved, you got another guest coming. It's our party. That's got to change. And we're going to do our best to change it. The media took that entire thing and they boiled it down to Bernie saying, it appears like I'm not going to be the nominee. But that's such an encapsulation of what the problem has been all along with the media is that they disregard all the other things that are even more important. They cherry-picked a wee little bitty comment in there that most people already knew anyway, and they go, ah See? And why do they do it? They do it because they're obsessed with the horse race aspect of politics. So they view it like it's the WWE. Ooh, it's personalities, and it's a soap opera, and ah, drama, ooh, Hillary Clinton, Martin O'Malley, Plastic Boy, oh, Donald Trump, Marco Rubio. Like, they view it like children. So they're not interested in policy substance. They're not interested in uh, competing philosophies. They're not interested in the well-being of the people in the country. <laughs> They're like, ooh, personalities, huh? Who has a better smile? Who raised the most money, huh? He said he's not gonna be the nominee. It's over. He tapped out. It was like a submission move, and he tapped out. It's over. It's over. Nobody listen to anything else he says. Let's move on. Hillary Clinton, queen, slay, something. So that's the problem, man. Now, if, when you listen to everything in context, first of all, there were, like, there's this giant straw man of Bernie voters, like, 
Like, they don't get it. No, they actually get it better than anybody else. They've known for a while now, from New York and onwards. Yeah, overwhelmingly likely he's not going to be the nominee. They've known that. But it was never just about one person. Yes, we would prefer he is the nominee, but if he's not the nominee, which again, 99%, 99.9% chance he's not going to be the nominee, save an indictment and some sort of miracle where the establishment flips to him, which again would be a fucking miracle, uh, it's about his policy positions. It's about the philosophy. It's about integrity in reforming the party. So why is he staying in? He's staying in to have leverage. He's staying in to be a thorn in the side of the establishment. He's staying in to make demands, to let them know, I don't know if you guys saw, I got damn near half the Democratic Party on my side, and they don't like Hillary Clinton. So uh, do you want my voters to vote for her? Well, you're going to have to make some big, big concessions. That's what this is about. In the minds of the idiots in the mainstream media, they thought it was literally about all Bernie people want is Bernie to win, and then that's it. Like, we're doing it because we care about the individual. Like, oh, this candidate is so attractive with his fucked up hair and the fact that he's a thousand and three years old and, you know... <laughs> like, no, we look at him and we care about his philosophy and his policies and what he fights for. So it was never just about one candidate and then we all go home. No, this is why he calls it a political revolution. So, why is he staying in? It's not because he wants the glory and he wants to win and that's what it's about. No. And we all knew this. It's because he wants to change the platform. By the way, he's already succeeded in some ways in doing that. Where he got to pick some people for the platform committee. He picked, for example, Dr. Cornell West. A massive progressive. And Cornell West is in there, for example, changing the democratic language in the platform on the issue of Israel-Palestine. He's saying, look, we're not going to be one-sided anymore. If we're the Democratic Party and we want to pretend like we're for the downtrodden, how about we actually be for the downtrodden? How about we say Palestinians have been oppressed, their human rights have been ignored for the longest time, so we're going to have language that's more inclusive, we're going to have language that's not just in favor of the Israelis. Ooh, crazy! Well, this is what Bernie Sanders' revolution is about. Let's change the platform, let's change the language on that, let's change the language on healthcare, let's... Hopefully Bernie keeps applying pressure as he's doing here, which is why he's still in the race, to try to get some appointments in a potential Hillary administration. Not him, because again, it's not about him. It's about progressive voices. You know, he could uh, put his foot down and say, look, how much of my help do you want? Do you want my help in campaigning? If you want my help in campaigning, all these bullshit neoliberals who are for deregulation and are for free trade deals, they ain't getting in your administration, Hillary. Understand what I'm saying? Now, if you want my help and you want me to campaign for you, okay, we're going to pick some fucking progressives. How you like them apples? This is what he can do. Uh, election rules changes. He alluded to that right there. 100% correct in pointing this out. He's like, look, superdelegates are undemocratic. And the bottom line is, the overwhelming majority pledged for my opponents before any votes were even cast. How can anybody defend that? So, uh, he actually, a massively self-sacrificial uh, move here in the sense that He's willing to do something like, for the greater good in the long run, eliminate superdelegates, even though they have the potential to help me in the short run, in this election. I mean, that's Bernie Sanders in a nutshell right there. Self-sacrifice for the good of the American people. Hey, if, if it takes me, an insurgent candidate, uh, who the superdelegates were supposed to be able to fight against, if it takes me scaring them enough... The establishment, in the sense that they think the superdelegates might help me, that they'll eliminate them. Great, as long as we get rid of the thing that's undemocratic, rock and roll. And then, uh, of course, he talks about open primaries. New York, my state, being the perfect example of that. Guys, first of all, they changed the times. So all the the counties that were more likely to go Bernie Sanders, and indeed did, and indeed did, excuse me, go Bernie Sanders. They changed the times to, it wasn't open from like 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night. It was like 12 o'clock in the afternoon to 9 o'clock at night or thereabouts. I remember doing the story on this. So, uh, they still ended up going Bernie, but it was an attempt to, to suppress the vote there. And then also, 3 million independents, more than 3 million independents were shut out of the process. When you open up the process and you allow the independents in, the other states have shown Bernie Sanders is much more likely to win. Well, why would the Democratic Party, who pretends to care the most about one man, one vote, be against one man, one vote? Well, because sometimes one man, one vote hurts Hillary Clinton and it helps the insurgent candidate, so in those cases, totally against one man, one vote. Bernie says no more, let's try to change that too. So this is why he's staying in, this is why he's still 
fighting. Yes, there's the super duper 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 long shot of the Hail Mary of an indictment and some miracle and the superdelegates flipping because she's down in the polls of Trump and he's up so much and yada yada. Yeah, that's a super duper duper long shot scenario because she doesn't have 2,383 delegates yet, which is what she needs to lock up the nomination without superdelegates. But what it's really, really about, Bernie Sanders knows this, the overwhelming majority of his supporters know this, is even though he's likely not to get the nomination and it's over, he can still change the party by applying pressure and by throwing his weight around and by being a thorn in the side of the establishment and by making demands. That is what a fighter for the American people does. He doesn't pack it up and go frolic in the meadow with the establishment and get a personal appointment to a position that helps his career and his glory. No, he continues to duke it out for the people. So take your bullshit headlines about, Bernie said he's not gonna be the nominee! Bernie said he's not gonna be the nominee! So why is he staying in? Oh, he's so stupid! He's so stupid! Stupid Bernie! That's stupid! Take all those dumbass articles and shove them right up your ass where they belong because they're massively unintellectual and they miss the entire point of Bernie Sanders and his political revolution.